Hello, my name is Janice Ryan, and today I'm going to do a literary analysis of Susan Glasper's Trifles. Now, Trifles was based on the homicide of John Horsack, which took place in, in 1900 in Warren County, Iowa. He was a prominent farmer who was found murdered in his bed by two blows of an axe to his head. It was assumed that the house was burglarized and the assailant attacked Mr. Hosack. His wife, Margaret Hosack, professed that she slept next to him at the time of the murder and was oblivious to the fact that her husband was being murdered right next to her. Mrs. Hosack was arrested and charged for killing him in their home. Prosecutors became aware of the domestic troubles the couple faced and saw that as a motive for her to have killed him. This was indeed a sensationalized story of the 1900s. Gaspel covered that story as a journalist and later transformed the events into a one-act stage play in 1960. And it was one that solidified her career in American drama. The cultural and social values in Trifles overlapped. The cultural values of the early 1900s represented gender inequality, which was based on the social and emotional roles of men and women. Men within that time period were assertive, tough, and concerned with power. And the women, they were modest and sensitive, concerned about the quality of life. They held a low status in society and were not involved in much decision making, whether from a community or household perspective. The men were in higher standing. Women were seen as autonomous individuals and basically had no intellectual freedom. They were very domesticated. They cooked, they cleaned, and took care of the children. The household was their domain and there was where their responsibilities were. Now marriage solely displayed male dominance and a woman's level of submission to her husband and his supervision. They lacked individuality. In the play, the women were not even addressed by their names. They were objectified, more so seen as their husband's property. Glasspell showed oppression in the most subtle ways. In the first scene of Trifles, the men walk in first and are followed by the women who come in slowly and stand close together. In a patriarchal society, just the art of entrance shows the subordination of women. The men were the ones who were involved in looking for clues that could have been a motive for Mrs. Wright to kill her husband. All the women came to do at that time was gather personal items for Mrs. Wright. So, right there and then the segregation was seen among the conversations um, the county attorney said dirty towels not much of a housekeeper would you say ladies and i shouldn't say she had the home making instinct upon entrance the kitchen was very unkept and because it is seen as a woman's place he judged her role as a homemaker there was a point in time mr hale said well, women are you, so we know what trifles. Now, thereafter, and the, women, and, and the men paid no mind to the foods which, Mr., which Mrs. White was concerned about. Those were women issues. The dismissal of that conversation was as if their opinions about anything did not matter. They were just interested in what they came to do at the house. Being motivated by power, they did not grant support to anything the ladies made mention to throughout the play. The men mocked them ever so often. However, the little things the men overlooked would be among the evidence they would need. As it relates to the social values, women's responsibilities in society were of course centered on housemaking. When it came to fairness or justice in that 1900 society, it was unseen for women. 
there was little protection for women against domestic abuse and women were not allowed to vote and neither were they allowed to be jurors. Now in light of this, from the evidence that Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters found, among them being the dead bird, which would have possibly been used as the motive, they knew Mrs. Wright would not stand a chance in winning the trial. In the play, the men were looking in obvious places for evidence, but the women found them in trifles. The broken canary cage was the first piece of evidence found, and that in itself symbolized entrapment and how broken the couple's marriage was. The farmhouse was in a very isolated area. There was not access to a phone, so Mrs. Wright was confined to the house and basically did not have much connection to the outside world. Mr. Hale said that he spoke to Mr. Wright about a party phone, but Mr. Wright was not interested because he said folks talk too much anyway and all he asked was peace and quiet. Now Minnie's home is a good example to show that home is a place of psychological and physical abuse for some women and although spatial division is a convention in the patriarchal society, John makes this segregation even stricter. So. When Mrs. Wright found solace in the canary, her husband was angered and broke the birdcage. The dead canary was the second piece of evidence that was found. Now the canary not only symbolized joy and freedom in the play, but it also spoke to her personality before she got married to John Wright. Mrs. Hale said that Mrs. Wright was kind of like a bird herself, you know, real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery. The bird reminded Mrs. Wright of who she once was when she would sing in the choir and was free. Yes, she was confined, but it now became tolerable because of the presence of the canary. John Wright saw the bird as an interruption to his cold silence, and Mr. Wright wanted to maintain control. He broke her spirit once again when he killed the bird. It could have been seen how she genuinely cared for the bird the way she wrapped it in silk and place it in the pretty box. Finally, the third piece of evidence that was found was the incomplete quilt. It indicated the way in which Mrs. Wright decided to kill her husband. She decided that she was going to strangle him. When the women were observing the quilt, the men laughed around it and the sheriff said that they wondered if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. And then Mrs. Peters responded and said that they think that she was going to knot it. It was then Mrs. Peters realized that Mrs. Wright could have possibly killed her husband. Trifles reflected what women were experiencing in the early 1900s. Glasswell exhibited the importance of sisterhood, equality, and justice for women in her play, for she despised the way in which Margaret Hosack was treated. She was a feminist. The women bonded while they were the, at the farmhouse. Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters understood what it was like to struggle with maintaining a household and what it was like to have lost something dear to you and the emptiness that was left. They understood loneliness. They understood alienation and the feeling of inferiority. County attorney made a statement to Sheriff. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear except a reason for doing it. But you know, Jewish, when it comes to women, if there was something definite, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing it, that statement he made expressed how important it was to determine a motive. The women had to do something, and that was to hide the bird, though Mrs. Peters was a bit reluctant. The women hid the dead bird. It showed that they were no free thinkers, that they were willing to finally go against the patriarchal society that oppressed them and finally make a difference. On the Trifles themes of isolation and gender difference, Glasswell also criticized the ignorance of men in her play as well. While they made light of the Trifles, the women were the ones who found the motive of the crime. In conclusion, the social, cultural, and economic values today are definitely different compared to the 1900s. 
women are more liberated are treated with more respect and are given equal opportunities they cannot express themselves as their own person without having to be objectified they have rights however there continues to be a fight against women and abuse women in literature is now more common susan glasswell's contribution to literature was one of the catalysts that encouraged women to write. She was very influential in changing the mindset of women. She won the 1931 Pulitzer Prize in drama. Thanks for listening.